Thanks to the supporters of Channel Member A11 Scorpio1996. Oh, boys and girls, life in the fifth tier is upon us, but that's not the most exciting thing. Start of the new season, not the most exciting thing. We all know what the most exciting thing is, and that is that we finally are earning a salary as manager of tour. And based on our salary of £725 a week, we are able to borrow £169,275 on a mortgage, according to the good old Halifax Mortgage Calculator. Other mortgage calculators are available because inexplicably, they still don't sponsor me. If you do mortgages, you know where to find me here on the internet. Of course, we are looking to buy in France, which means we need to convert into French francs or whatever the modern equivalent is. This to be something called the euro. Um, and we can borrow roughly £200,000 in euros based on doing a currency conversion. I know we actually have to go to a French bank, but I didn't have a Halifax for me to look at. One slight problem is I still don't speak French. I am limited still to looking at Rightmove, and Rightmove has absolutely no properties in the price range that we are looking for. So my plan B is rather than buying straight away, maybe we could just do an Airbnb. It's all in English. I understand what's going on. There's loads of options. We can rent for a bit. You can do month-long rents on Airbnb. And that way, once we earn a little bit more money, we can maybe upgrade and go to somewhere a little bit better. So if I'm earning, um, what, £37,000 a year, it works out. I can comfortably afford any of these, really. Don't necessarily want to spend £1,200 a month on a full home. But these uh, these rents, anything around four, five, six, seven hundred pounds a month, these seem doable. I don't want to live on a sofa bed. That one's only got outside. This one, chairs in the photo. This looks like this might be the answer. An entire apartment. It's a, it's a studio, one bed, one bath. Let's have a little look at it. There's chairs. Um, there's a little sign that spells out home in English, so I don't get confused about whether I'm at home or not. That's, see, that's thoughtful. A, a wardrobe, some flowers. There's two more chairs there. Toilet, plenty of room to get my legs around the toilet as well. I was in France recently and the toilet had the walls so close together, I could barely open my legs to have a sit down wee. It was a horrific experience. Um, there's one towel and a basket and four coat hangers. Picture not hung on the wall. I like it. Why hang a picture on a wall? You can just rest it on a table. Um, shower curtain, um, weird little micro microwave. And I guess that's, our, that's all we've got in terms of an oven. Presumably the big boy oven would have been there. But it isn't. There is a fridge, though, which is nice. Uh, a balcony? Goodness me. Chairs are plenty. I mean, considering this is very much a start-at-home Airbnb, there's like eight or nine chairs here. This is... I'm going to feel like a very rich man. Bearing in mind, I've been living in my tent in the grounds of the training ground for the last year or so. So with all your Airbnb charges, £694 a month. Boom. We're living in a comfortable studio. Six minutes walk from the station. Hello and welcome to part seven of the Tour de France. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our first two games of the new season. We are at home against Charters Football 2 and away against AS Portugues de Borges. I still don't really know how to say the names of the teams. Um, these are teams that should... Give us a good idea of where we are going to be sitting come the end of the season. Now, obviously, the preseason media prediction thinks we are uh, looking good for second place, but only one team gets promoted out of this league. That's not just one automatic promotion place. There's no playoffs. It is finish first and go up or, or nothing. So, really, we need to make sure we're better than Chateau 2, who are the team that are favourites for promotion. But the teams we're playing today... Um, expected to be 5th and 10th. Portuguese actually came up with us. So I would expect us to be able to beat them. We beat everybody last year. And as you can see, we have got a significant chunk of the Media Dream 11. Bath still knocking around. Might have to look into Bath at some point. But if you missed the transfer special yesterday, there's your very quick summary of what went on. Um, we didn't go nuts. It's still a very familiar looking team to the one that we all know and love from last season. Um, in fact, looking at it, I think there's just the one player in there, uh, Temi Toppy, in at the back, who I've, I mean, I apologise. I can't say his surname, so rather than be it, I figured the least offensive option was not trying. 
because I was getting it so wrong. So he's just Temi Toppy. I can say that. So that can be uh, that can be his name, and he is in. Um, other than that, it is the same eleven that played the majority of last season. The new boy, uh, Lachero Tho Yad, um, the French under eighteen international, who's still eighteen, starts his tour career from the bench, as do all of the young wingers that we brought in, and a couple of our young name in the game boys as well. So our team for the first day of the new season. We've got Goda in goal, a back four of Dennis, Tenetopi, Camera, and Amimi, Brian, Peron, Dumas, and Wimber in midfield, and then Big Fat Dennis up front with Buzrara. Um, let's uh, let's start as we mean to go on. And I'm not expecting a season of total dominance like we had last year, but you've just seen the media at Dream Eleven. You've just seen the uh, the bookies' expectations of where we're going to finish this season. I certainly expect to be there or thereabouts in the title race, promotion race, um, and I'm very much bracing myself for the disappointment of if there's just one other really good team in the league alongside us, there's the chance that we could have... I mean, look at Vinul last year. They were so dominant against everybody over there. They were miles better than everybody else in that league last year, apart from us, because we were miles better than them as well. So if we're this year's renewal at this level and we dominate everyone apart from one team who finished top, oh, I'll be sad. I mean, I'm assuming we're going to be doing some dominating. I'd, I'd like to think, based on what I've just seen from the Dream 11, we should be looking pretty solid and we have opened the scoring three minutes into the season. And was it Peron who got on the end of that? I think it was Peron. I was too busy doing my speech to... Pay full attention to who had the ball. So it's Brian with the cross. And then, yeah, it's Peron who is there to nod it in at the far post, bursting forward out of midfield like a true box-to-box -box midfield player. So the plan for the season, if we are working on the assumption that we're going to be pretty good again, um, just like last year, I am wary of just showing five nils all the time. It's fun. It's, it's really fun for me to play. I get that if there's no jeopardy in the videos, it they become optional if you know what the outcome is going to be, and that's when views start to drop. So um, I'm not going to show you eight, nine episodes of this season if we're just winning every match, because that's eight or nine opportunities for you to go, oh, well, I know they're going to win both matches. Let's not bother. So we will focus in on the key moments, the big teams, the, the cup runs, if we have cup runs, um, and the matches where we're actually not quite sure what the outcome's going to be. And the the number of episodes we show this season will really be dictated by how good we look in comparison to the rest of the league. Portuguese, who we were talking about before, they're 1-0 up away from home. So maybe they've strengthened over the summer. Who knows? But we're 2-0 up after seven minutes, which suggests we are a considerably better team than Shatters, who we are playing. So and Wimber has now picked up a knock. And this looks like a nice opportunity for me to bring on one of my new young wingers. So Charles Elian Costes is going to come on on that right-hand side. Wimber can have an immediate rest. So we've now got two new boys on the pitch. Of course, Lefebvre was the guy we were bringing on in that role last year, but he is one of several players who have to be turned professional. Just got a little bit silly about the money that he was asking for. And because of that, ended up getting released because... Oh, I'll either be an amateur or I'm going to have £800 a week. That's my best French accent impression. Well, then you're leaving then, aren't you, you silly goose? Because I'm not paying anybody £800 a week. Not even Big Fat Dennis is on £800 a week. Right, Brian, with the in-swinger looking for camera and his header goes just over 3-0 up inside 20 minutes. And um, I'm already contemplating whether I even show you the second half as we are as we are winning so very comfortably um lovely ball through to Buzrara and he is there with the feet yeah we're not showing you the second half this is this is going to be bonkers we'll get to half time and then I'll have a ponder and find a difficult match um I'm not going to play against a team we knew we were better than last year so slight change of plan we'll do this one we're not going to play the other team We'll get some matches under our belt, get an idea of where we stand. And the second half of this episode will be us against a team who uh, might have a chance of beating us, which obviously this lot do not have. We are another level. I mean, we've gone from being an amateur team in an amateur league to a professional team 
in a league that's got a lot of semi-pro clubs in the board, clearly um, with high expectations for us to just charge through the leagues. I've had a couple of people in the comments say that it's the fault of the database and doing these lower league databases and that kind of things. I would like to refer to the fact that in real life, Tor have done very, very, very well down in tier six, because obviously this is the same tour team that won tier five last year and then got administratively relegated to tier six. So it was a team good enough to win the level we're playing at now already, which is why we're so good at this level, because we were already good enough to win at this level. But then we got relegated. Obviously, we were going to win the league below and we should come back up and be pretty competitive and look to win at this level as well. It's going to be next year in tier four, a team that a few a league a few years ago we genuinely got relegated from. That's when that's when things are going to start to get a little bit a little bit juicy for us, I think. And of course, at that point, the sponsorships start to run out as well, and we're not going to get as good sponsorships as a tier four, tier five team as we were able to secure when we were up in tier two. So money and money is going to start to become a problem at the same time as competition starts to pick up and we start to get back into a level that we have struggled at previously. We are six still up inside 25 minutes. We're winning the league again this year, boys and girls. Bring on the cup run. This is bonkers. I mean, like, this team might be terrible, so I'm not going to just assume that we are going to be rampant all season long again off the back of one match, but I think it's pretty safe to assume we're going to do okay this year. So I think we'll, uh, we'll we'll wait until half time or the next goal, whichever happens first. Oh, Buzrara from range, bouncing it back off the post. Um, and actually, it looks like they're going to get a little bit of an attack going here. Maybe they'll get themselves a consolation goal before after. No, no, the highlight just ended. No, no consolation goal for you. Uh, Dubas, our ball winning midfielder, just able to get forward on the right wing because why not? He doesn't know what to do with it once he gets there. But he was able to take up the position, which I guess, nice for him. Get himself out of his comfort zone a little bit. And there's the new boy, Costas, on the right-hand side. Plays it into Big Fat Dennis. Back to Costas again. Who can't get his cross in, but Amimi gives it back to him and says, here, have another go. And Brian is in with the header. And we've seen him score a gazillion of those. But on this occasion, it does go wide. So I will check in with you again at the end of the match just to show you the final score. And then, like I say, second half of the episode, we will... We'll find someone a little bit, a little bit more, who will offer a little bit more competition. We'll find out when we play Chateau, our supposed big competition this season. I know I said we'll be back at the end of the game, but we're coming back a bit early because we've got some youngsters making debuts and it's significant. Stephen Boyd, Michael Oliver, two name in the game, channel members who've come through the youth setup. Six, he's Italian. How is he Italian? He's also French. That's all right then. So he's Italian, born in Tour. Is Tor near? I don't think Tor's near Italy. I guess he has Italian. But he's Portuguese. Is he also born in Tor? Of course he is. Why wouldn't he be? Well, there you go. Those two. Are, glad we're not doing French only. Our first two players to come through the youth team wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be allowed to play. And we've also got the other young winger who's come on. Um, and Yad has come on up front as well. Yad Lochero Fo. So we are going to just have a look to see how the new boys get on. We did score one more goal. Um, and since then, it's just been kind of not a lot happening as we've uh, as we've kind of set ourselves into the fact we're seven nil up, and our opponents have kind of given up. But with fresh blood on the pitch, um, I want to see how they get on. Costas Costas has had an impressive debut. He looks like he's certainly got some attacking nous about him. Uh, Goad has actually had quite a few touches of the ball in this second half. You'll uh, you may have noticed at half time. I think they'd only had three shots. I think that was their 14th shot in the match. So they've definitely woken up for this second half and have given us a little bit more of a game just because the camera wasn't rolling. They just want to make me look like a silly goose. Uh, Cross comes in looking for big fat Dennis and can't find it. But there is Stephen Boyd on the ball. Gives it to Temi Toppy. Um, and now we just work it back nicely through the midfield. We want to give it to Foe, really. I want to see how he is with his finishing. Our young French under-18 international didn't really seem alert to it, but goodness me, was he quick to make up for his mistake. Um, unfortunately, nothing comes from it, and Oliver is there to give it to uh, Perron, and there is Yad Lokorofo, and somehow his third goal of the season, despite the fact it's his first ever goal for us, and it's been disallowed. So, 
yeah, on all fronts, not ideal. He was offside. And uh, it remains only 7-0. Chateau are winning. So that is the... We're going to hunt for... I hope we've got a game with them relatively soon. If not, we might show a cup game instead as the second game in this episode. Or if someone else emerges as quite good, I'll show you when we play someone who's quite good. And we're down to 10 men here. Um, we'll just play without a left back. I mean, we're literally in the last minute. Hopefully, Dennis hasn't picked up a proper injury there because... That would be a long way from ideal, but let's have a little look at him after the game and just see uh, see if we're going to have to go and find ourselves a left back because it's one position where we don't have a huge amount of strength in depth. So he's going to be out for six weeks. I guess the youngsters, the two who came on to make their debuts there, can both play left back. So we'll just make do with what we've got knocking about the place right when do we play Chateau? Then, right, we're going to come back for that match. I think that's much more significant than showing you a game that, you know, we all know we're going to beat them. Like, watch us lose now. Um, but we're going to come back for Chateau or Chateau 2, um, as they are supposedly the promotion favourites in this league. How did they get on on the first day? 2 1 win away against Oleon. Let's go play them. Well, this isn't the Chateau game, but we are struggling at the moment to make our way past whoever this lot are. Oh, I can't say their name, uh, but it's 1-1 with 15 minutes ago. We've just made a massive swathe of substitutions to try and get a, uh, a breakthrough. Brian firing it over the top of the crossbar. Chateau were actually losing as well, but they've just grabbed an equaliser in their game. So we are still top of the league at the moment, but starting to feel like it's not necessarily going to be as smooth sailing as I expected it would. I'm thinking we're going to steamroller past every team we play. And actually, there's the chance for a breakaway goal from here. With a couple of minutes to go, we need to be very alert to what's going on. We had a lot of players committed forward. I think they've mostly made it back into position as well. But we've got young Stephen Boyd playing at centre-back because we bring him on in every game. We want to give him game time. Um, we've got a very inexperienced midfield, which I'll introduce you to in a little while. Um, we've had some problems in midfield. Um, and if we're not careful, we could lose this football match. Although Foe is in here after the ball through from 16-year-old Diallo, who's come through our youth team. It falls to Costas, one of the wingers who's having to play in central midfield today. And it ends up going wide. I think it's going to end in a draw there. I think that's our first game, first league game of the save that we've not won. So... That sets things up quite nicely for this Chateau game that we play now. So there might have been a couple of unfamiliar names there because we did do some deadline day business, uh, bringing in th three players. Leo Josselin from Paris FC on loan until the end of the season. None of these are costing us anything. Um, so he is a right back. We also got Lamine Buhanga, um, who is 20 years old. And he is on loan from Guignamp until the end of the season. And then Mathias Jean-Marie is a winger who can play on either side. We have an abundance of these now, but this one's very good. And he is on loan from Clermont until the end of the season. We've also had to draft in some of the youngsters, as mentioned, um, because uh, why is David Carter ineligible? Oh, you have to be 16. To, so poor old 15-year-old David Carter can't play. He's not old enough. Ridiculous. Um, but we have been playing 16-year-old Ibrahim Diallo, um, who's started the last couple of games uh, because we've had an injury to Perron, who's been out for a little while. Uh, Dumas is now suspended as well. So you'll see Diallo in there again today alongside one of the new boys from the summer, Ansa Ahamada combo. Um, a midfield combo, if you will. It's fine. We, we do, I mean, let's not dwell on it and then we'll understand that it's fine. Uh, we are going to be resting Big Fat Dennis for this game um, because these boys are really quite good and this might be the future up front for Tor. Look at the goal return for Buzrara. We know how good he is, uh, but this guy... Hold on, that's not, the, that's not the screen I'm aiming for. Also, pretty solid goal return as well, largely off the bench, so we're going to give him a start. My one concern is... Um, is rare and not ideal as a target man, as he's only five foot nine. But well, he has got 14 for heading, only six jumping reach. And uh, yeah, but let's not worry about the attributes. We could make him a false nine, but then we'd have to change the entire system around to accommodate him. Big Fat Dennis will be on by the hour mark anyway, I'm sure. 
What we need to do here is just make sure... Shall I introduce the team first? We have to just make sure that we can beat Chateau and end the episode top of the league. That's the goal. So Goda in goal. Dennis, Temitopi, Camera, and Amimi at the back. Brian, Combo and Diallo alongside Jean-Marie in midfield and then Buzrara and Rochero Foe up front. I mean, how many names did I butcher today, boys and girls? Probably plenty. Um, I like the fact we're able to do a little bit of rotation up front. Now, this is not the end of Big Fat Dennis by any means. We might even figure out a way to play all of them together. There's not really going to be a way to play all three of them together up front because we've got so many good wingers now as well. But um, if Buzrara and Foe are going to combine like that, Big Fat Dennis might have to uh, accept that his, his immediate future is going to be sitting on the bench waiting for an opportunity to take his spot back because that is a stunning goal. Foe plays a lovely ball in for Buzrara. Uh, my alarm has gone off to celebrate the fact we've scored a goal and it's taken us less than two minutes to open the scoring against what I'm expecting to be our closest rivals this season. And Jean-Marie is there and Diallo is there, the 16-year-old Ibrahim Diallo. He is over the moon. It's only his third game of professional football and he is off the mark. We've got a homegrown boy scoring in a top of the table clash we might not be uh doing the financial management quite as well as i'd promised i would early on or a little bit over the wage budget couldn't be helped it was largely with contract renewals after we'd done our signings and signing people like diallo who needed a contract giving to them after i'd already completed my transfers and didn't really leave me much option had to give him some money um so i'm not taking any responsibility for that not my fault <laughs> Um, but what we are doing is trying to focus on the, the French or like French second nationality, French speaking, uh, lots of African players, um, but largely French or French speaking and youth. We are definitely going to be prioritizing the youth coming through our own youth setup because in comparison to other clubs at this level, our youth setup is delicious. So we may as well abuse it while we can because there will come a day where our youth setup is well below the divisional average. I don't know what level we'll hit that. And we'll have to start throwing money at it. And money is something that we're not likely to have very much of going forward because that's why we're in the pickle we're in in the first place. So let's make hay while the sun shines in Diallo. Making a lot of hay in central midfield today. And that's just how I like it. Look who's there behind us, though. Vinuel, our rivals from last year, currently up in the second place, only a point behind us with a game in hand. Are they going to end up being our big rivals again this year? Because that is uh, that is quite the story if they start chasing us up through the leaves. Although, of course, as I keep hammering home, um, there is only one team that gets promoted this season. So even if Vignol were to finish second behind us, they wouldn't get to follow us up into tier four next season, at least. Obviously, they could come up the following year if they're that much better than everybody else. But let's not assume that we're going to finish behind. That's a lovely finish from Buzrara. Let's not assume that they're going to finish second behind us at the moment. They're in pole position. Now, I know we were better than them last year, but as the season got on, the gap between us and them narrowed. And they ended up not a million miles away from us, quality-wise, the most recent time we played them at the end of last season. So as they are, uh, as they are, I mean, they've had, they've, they've gone semi-pro, they've brought in transfers. Who knows how good they're going to be this year? They're likely to have a very different looking team this year. Um, ours is largely the same and if anything a little bit weaker in some areas Diallo probably wouldn't have got in last year's team we've conceded a goal here this is all very new we weren't conceding goals last year this is this is new ground for me I'm not sure I care for it I, I much preferred it when we were when we were the dominant team winning games 15-0 that was that was fun for me it might not be fun to watch but it was fun for me I enjoyed it and I feel like I didn't get enough of it um, we are, I mean, we are still doing pretty solidly when it comes to goal difference this season. Uh, Big Fat Dennis, get out and warm up. You're going to be coming on in a minute. We've got plans for you. It's not who uh, it's not who Chateau want to be seeing with 20 minutes to go. Big Fat Dennis getting himself ready. Here he is. Big Fat Dennis has arrived. We're also going to uh, make some changes to the midfield. Um, yeah, we're going to really shuffle the midfield around, in fact, and do this. Dennis has picked up... Can I have one Dennis on the pitch at the time at the moment, apparently? I mean, we can go over to the left, and then we've got one more substitution to make. Uh, we don't really need to make it, so I guess we'll just... We'll make do with four today. You don't always have to make five. That should be the rule. 
you don't always have to make five substitutions. Obviously, if we'd have had another one of our kids there on the bench, we'd have brought him on. But as we've got a little bit more first choice playery for a game like this, we uh, we can make do with what we've got. And it's it's not been a thumping again. The gap between us and the competition is not as wide this year as it was last year, which I guess you would expect with us getting promoted up to a new level. But the important thing is we do find ourselves top of the table. We have had an undefeated start to the season and we are now going to get some games under our belt before the next episode. I've been saying all along, I don't want to dwell too much on these early seasons when everything is all a little bit easy. The meat of the save comes when it starts to get really hard and we want to get there as quickly as possible episode-wise. So uh, we won't show Vinyl because it's too soon. And um, what we could potentially do is go all the way through to Chateau and Vignol, who we play them both away from home very close together. That is a long way off. We're in October now, and that's in February. So if there's an interesting cup game between now and then, we might do that first and then come back for Chateau Vignol, have the season finished off by the end of the week again. Easy peasy. That's what we're looking for. Um, if you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.